It's a new day. It's a new way. Another day is waiting for me to make it through. Did you know that it's possible to start every day on the right note? It's a new day. It's a new way. A new beginning. A chance to make it right. A lovely and excellent day to you all. This is Pastor Brenda Muntembas Chilembe from Jesus' Life Church in Zambia. We've been carrying out an excellent series that once us to look back at the Word of God, the preciousness of the Word of God, and just how we can personalize the Word of God in our life. And the series that we're taking is Times and Seasons. We've looked at some very interesting things, talking about how God has placed limits. He has placed limits on our times and our seasons. But again, God is boundless. God is without borders. God is limitless. And so where God has set his limit for you, it can take you a thousand years, you will not reach that limit. The potential that God has put in each one of us, we cannot overcome it. And so today I want us to look at Acts and chapter 1. We've been see, slowly progressing. The last time we looked at Acts chapter 17 from verse 26 where we said, and out of one blood or from one blood he has made people to dwell throughout the earth and we said two things number one thing is that the one blood that flows through us is the blood of Adam blood of disobedience blood that took us away from the presence of God and number two the one blood that flows through us is the blood of Christ that was shed on Calvary if for sure we say that Jesus is my Lord and my King my Savior and my friend then the blood of Christ that flows through me flows through you and here we're discussing to say, so why are there differences? Why should I think that the other person is worthy only to be below me, is worthy only to be trampled upon or to be looked down upon? Because the blood of Christ still saved them. Christ Jesus came to save us, each one by name. For God is not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to Christ that all should come to salvation through Christ. Therefore, it takes away the desire for division and puts in us the desire for unity. Today, I want us to look at Acts and chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. This is the time when the Lord Jesus is resurrected from the dead and he has met with his apostles and he's sending them out. But on this particular day, he's bidding them farewell and going back to glory. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has set by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my, my, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Therefore, the verse that we're concentrating on today is, therefore he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which my father has set by his own authority. Now, it's very interesting, you know, human nature is so curious, huh? And we're told curiosity killed the cat. But every day we are curious and we keep on asking, what will happen tomorrow? And then when tomorrow comes, we say, what will happen next week? Curiosity takes us away from the attention of the now. Do you know that? Our basic responsibility is in the now. And so the disciples here, the same, they said to Jesus, So will you at that time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that my father has set by his own authority. God does not need to consult anyone to set the times and the seasons, but the fact is that the times and the seasons are set. Today I would like us to talk about curiosity or just the desire to know what will happen tomorrow at the expense of what is happening or not happening today. You know that our reward is not based on intention, but on action taken. You may have the best intentions, but you have not put into action anything. You're as bad as that person had had no intentions and had no plans at all. 
um, a friend of mine was telling me a story about this lady that used to go to the fields and every day she would plan out her work. So what she would do is that she would carry her bag, her kindu, and put stones in there, okay? So she would stand at one end of the field and throw one stone and say, I'm going to uh, cultivate up to where that stone has reached, maybe from now, six in the morning, up to ten. Then before she starts cultivating, she walks to where that stone is, however far it was that she had thrown the stone and where it landed. She stands there and she throws another stone and she says, now from 10, I'll take a break for 20 minutes. Then I will start and where that stone has landed is where I'm going to cultivate up to. Believe it or not, she would walk again without cultivating to the point where she put the last stone and throw another stone. Now the moral of the story is that it would now be five o'clock and she has not cultivated at all. So she'll walk back and say, oh, time is gone. Tomorrow I'll come earlier so that I throw my stones much earlier and I start cultivating. You may think that is very silly, but that is how we are. We make plans, you know, we make plans and we've got plans, but we are not judged on intentions. We are judged on activity. We are judged on what we have planned and what we actually do. So today I'm saying, you're worried about tomorrow. So um, if I start this course, does it mean that my boss will promote me after four years? And you want your boss to commit to that before you start school and four years elapse. And then you say, um, if I go to ask that lady to marry me, is she going to marry me? And so every time you see her, you're like, you're asking your friend, go and ask her if she's going to answer me. And then the lady will say, as I know any good lady will say, let him come and ask me himself and hear the answer from me. You will not go out. You see, you're curious for the answer, but you need to be brave for the activity. It is not up to you to know what the answer will be. It is up to you to be courageous enough to step out. Jesus said to them, it is not up to you to know what the times and seasons that my father has set by his own authority. So you don't want to go for that job interview, right? You want to ask somebody, you give them your qualifications on the side and say, tell me, are my qualifications sufficient? I say to you, whether your qualifications are sufficient or not, get out, get up out of bed. You know, you have to get up, wake up, dress up and show up. As you show up for that interview, you look up to God. So curiosity will not take you anywhere. Your planning will not take you anywhere without you stepping forth. Step forth into the water. Test the waters. That's what we're saying today. And so my beloveds, Acts chapter 1 verse 7 says, And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which my father has set by his own authority. But he gave them this charge. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses or you will go forth in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth without knowing whether the Lord God is sending me to come back for you tomorrow or the other day. I want your life to progress. That is what Jesus is saying to us today. Don't be curious about tomorrow whether you'll be promoted or not, whether that girl will say yes or no, whether that guy will come to ask you. You get up by the power of the Holy Spirit and do those things that you know God for sure has set for, for you to do. Go out there. Go out. Go seek. Don't let the grass grow under your feet. That's what they say. My beloveds, this is Pastor Brenda Muntembas Chilembe wishing you a blessed, glorious and excellent day. It's a new day It's a new way